Hello, happy Humber Wednesday. I've got a beer. This has got a big B on the top of it, so I wonder what this means. Well, this is a grain the glass video. Hooray! Everybody loves grain the glass videos. Um so yeah, while I get this poured, you can watch that. Okay, see you in a minute. Yeah, probably just boil inside today, I think. It's another brew day. Yet another brew day because I'm in the kitchen, obviously. Um, I was thinking long and hard this morning about what I was going to brew today. I wasn't sure. What I've come up with is um, a toast ale. You'll know by the title. The reason is because I've got one of these. And we always end up chucking a lot of this out. This is, we buy this for the kids, basically. And they don't always eat it. You know what kids are like. So, uh, yeah. I thought, I remember seeing a program ages ago on TV about how people made beer from using old bread, stale bread. I was trying to use up, you know, food and things like that, trying, you know, reducing waste. And I thought that was a good idea, I'll do that sometime. And well, today's the day. So, I'm using this, as I've already shown you, this is called Vita Bread. Um, you can see there, it's like a little Scottish lion, is it, or dragon, whatever it is, it's Scottish animal. But, it may be originated in Scotland, we think. There's like a little blurb on, not this one, but the other bakery that makes this, saying that there's like some kind of farmer's wife, some in Scotland, that had wanted some kind of sweet malty bread, and that's where it's emanated from. I don't know if you can buy it anywhere else, other than Northern Ireland, but um, it's really nice. This, it's malt loaf, they call it. So it's basically, it's basically bread, it's really soft when it's fresh and it tastes like, tastes like malt, malt extract if, you, if you've used a beer kit or if you've used malt extract now not obviously bittered but the really sweet stuff that's what it tastes like and when you toast it as well it kind of comes, it kind of caramelizes and becomes this lovely kind of caramelly sweet um, toast, it's, kinda, it's a bit of a unique experience eating one of these but I'm thinking that it might be good for making beer with because of the flavour because the flavour is just all malt you may be able to get a bit of roasty malt in that I think it's on the ingredients actually it says um, wheat flour malted wheat flour molasses invert sugar syrup malted barley flour uh, roasted malted barley flour you get the idea so anyway so, I've got the, um, got a packet and a half of this, I'm not using this, this is for the kids. Um, I've got it in the oven, I'm following a recipe from like, um, toastale.com, or I'm loosely following a recipe from that anyway. Um, so yeah, I've got it in the oven now, I've sliced it up, I'm drying it out, and I'm going to mash it in now. So basically I've got some pale malt here. Got a little bit of Munich I'm gonna put in and I'm still wondering about my little but careful in. Oh god, here he comes. So that's it. I'm going over to do that now, so I'll bring you back. Oh here he comes. Quack. Okay, so it's all in here, this is it. Here, what I'm gonna do is chop it up, put it into the mixing bowl and then mash it into the pot. Now in fact I'll let you see it. This is kind of how it looks. It's kind of really dark. I don't know if the colour will transfer over there, but we'll soon find out. It's nice and toasted. So we've got another one in there. So as I say, it's been on for an hour, say. It's nice and hard. So, uh, yeah. I also put a little extra water in them. We only need to mash with 10 litres. I'm mashing with 11 and a half this time. Because I'm guessing that a lot of it's going to be soaked up into this stuff here. So. Let's find out what happens. Okay, so this is what we've ended up with. It's like this. Still tastes nice. 768 grams is in here. Minus what I just eaten there. Crumbs all over the floor. This is a bloody mess. Gonna mash in there. This has got disaster written all over it. On that area. But, hey ho. Needs to be done, doesn't it? Jesus Christ. Oh my God. What an idea. Christ, it's the wrong night. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's us all mashed in. Note to self, if you're gonna do this again, get a bigger pot. You need a lot of headspace with that bread, my god. That was terrifying. But we're on now. So in terms of hops, so in that recipe on toast ale, I don't know what it was, it was like fuggles or something. But we're not using fuggles. Or anything like that. What I'm gonna use is is when I first um said this on the video, the Homebrew Wednesday ages ago that I was gonna do something like this. Matt over at Avs Bristol Brewing sent me a bottle of wiper and true um, bread and butter pudding ale or something like that it's called. Uh, or it was toast ale or something like that. It was a delicious drink. It was very, very delicious. What was in it was matcha wicker. So I have 100 grams of matcha wicker right there, which I'm going to use. Well, I'm not going to use all the 100 grams. But I think um, it said on the bottle something like the ABUs were only 16 or 20 or something like that. So um, I don't think I'm going to do any bittering. I think what I'm going to do is throw everything in right at the end. And here he comes. What do you want? What? You coming up? Come on, so. There he is. Charlie Brown himself. Say hello. 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 See, so yeah, what I'm going to do is then throw everything in as late additions. And then it'll probably still be above 16 ABUs. I don't think you can make beer at only 16 ABUs, really. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So all the ABUs are going to be at the end. Um, so that's it. I'll uh, I'll come back for them. I'll get this all measured out. 15, 10, 5, 0. There it is. All much a week ago. So yeah, I ended up with 13.5 litres. I had actually, um, as is usually the way with small batches, got the head staggers and um, said that I wanted a little bit more work um, because I'd left, I'd left myself over a bit of extra sparge water. I don't know why. And um, so yeah, I thought I was just putting a, a little bit of water in that and then then the next thing I'd, I had a couple of jars of malt extract, little 370 mm gram jars. Of course they went in as well and then before I needed it. It's like another three or four litres going in so. So yeah, any hope I had. Or any pretense I had of that it is is going to be some kind of scientific um, investigation as to you know how much sugar you can get out of uh, Vita bread. Yeah, that's all out the window. So, but yeah, at least I'll know what it tastes like anyway. So, with any luck, I'm going to give it a taste now. With any luck, the, the matcha wicker will um, be present. I actually got it to 16 ABUs as well too, which I was very pleased about. That's 16 ABUs not counting the hop stand. I know you do get bitterness out of hop stands, but um, I can never, I never trust calculators. Those calculators you get, Bearsmith and all, you know, some of it, it's just nonsense what it what comes out with sometimes. It's putting an extra 30. Maybe use or something on like on extreme cases and it's just it's clearly wrong. So yeah, I don't know what to believe. It's not better at all, really. There's a little bit of bitterness in there, so yeah, I think it's good. So that's it. Um I don't think there's gonna be any dry hop on this either. It's just gonna be that and that's it. So uh yeah, that's it. I'll come back for a tasting video. There's it there. This is not actually the one I opened. That was, uh, you can see how busy it is. I'm not sure what's going on. We've had a bit of a heat wave, and I think uh, sitting in the next door is not the ideal place for it. Yeah, it was a gusher. So, yeah, there you are. Because um, I, I wanted to show you the colour because look at that. It's like really, it's almost like a, a ruby colour. It's absolutely fantastic. I really like that. Just the way that has turned out. I'm looking for the best place to put it. Beautiful red colour, orangey. Phenomenal. So yeah, so it finished like then 
Um, it's been in the bottle now for about, I think this is about 8 weeks now, so it should be well conditioned. Maybe a bit too bloody well conditioned, fell out with. So yeah, what does it taste like? That's the question. Smell, it's kind of getting like a dark fruits type of smell off it. Um, it's hard to say because it's just like, it's exploding up on me. They're not normally this fizzy. It seems to be just in the last week. It seems to have turned on just as like the fizz bomb switch has been pressed. But anyway, going on. Much a week of the one in there. I'm not really picking up on any of it. I think this one's very much about the about that Vita bread I went into. It's kind of got like this, like the aroma. It's kind of got that <coughs> dark fruits type of. Belgian -y type of feel to it, taste to it, which is not what I was expecting at all. I'm quite surprised about that. But on the other hand, I shouldn't be surprised because it was something like 25% of the grain bill was that bread, that dark, sweet bread. So I kind of should have figured something like that would happen. Nice and fizzy as well, too, like a Belgian beer. I think this beer wants to be. Wants to be Belgian, I think that's what it is. And I've gotten a tulip glass for some reason. Strange, isn't it? There is no bitterness on it at all. 17 IBUs, that's what it gets you. But that taste, I think maybe when it was fermenting, when the very first day it started fermenting, I think it was in the hot press and it was like the temperatures outside must have um, crept up because when I went in the, the next the day, that day, that evening, it was like 24, 25 degrees in there so maybe there's a bit of phenol action or something going on in this which is maybe what makes me think it's like a, a Belgian beer. doesn't have the peppery taste, the kind of spicy taste maybe, that a Belgian, you know the kind of Belgian yeast gives you. This is the American Ale Yeast 5, so it should be clean. It's interesting. It's not like any beer I've brewed before. So I'm not sure how to how to take it. It's not bad. But it's not what I was expecting at all. It's definitely a strange one. I think if I was doing it again, I definitely want a bit more hop flavour in there. Um maybe increase that. I decreased the amount of Vita that went into it because I think I just I think it overdid it slightly. But it's okay. It is drinkable. It's just not it's just not what I was expecting it to be at all. So uh so yeah, there you are. That is the Vita Pale Ale. I think I would ferment that as well too in the fermenting fridge if I was doing it again. 
or maybe switch out the yeast. Maybe I should actually switch out the yeast for a Belgian yeast and see what that does. And that will be a real kind of super malty, spicy Belgian beer. It's an idea actually. So yeah, there you are. So we'll just uh, say cheers and uh, happy homebrew Wednesday. I'll see you next week.